Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amno Chaktivel, and this is part four of the Git playlist. Again, in this video, we are going to understand what is Git commit, right? Uh, so in order to understand this, uh, I'm sure you would have watched all the three previous videos. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend please to watch that uh, so that you can get a glimpse of what is happening uh, before this, right? So now uh, to understand what is a Git commit, um, you know, you can imagine uh, that a commit, you can commit a, your code or your project when you think, uh, you know, you have a meaningful uh, state for your system. For example, let's say um, you have a file uh, that is now in a meaningful state and you want to have this version, uh, you want to version the state of this particular project, then you, you can commit the code. When you do a commit, in future, if you want to come back to the state, you can exactly do that. So you you may commit when you think your projects or your code is is in a meaningful state, and it you also want this to be a version the copy of your system. Let's say this is version one of my code. This is version two of my code. This is version three. And let's say in version ten, you want to go back to version two. You can go back. And this is what a commit is. Commit can help you to go back to that particular version. So, uh, you know, when you think you have a you have a need to version this, please make a commit. In order to do a commit, you have to do two things. One, you have to move the file to the staging area, and you have to commit to the local repository. Then, to understand uh, why this co uh, git commit involves these two steps. Okay, uh, in the previous videos. I have only given this particular diagram where I told you have a remote uh, where you want to store all your code in, in terms of so that no everyone, every other developers can access this. And you will also maintain your own local repository and you'll also have your working copy. But in this place, I have never mentioned about staging area. Uh, but how this is there? Again, this is a high level diagram and there is a staging area between your working copy and local repo. We'll also understand with a quick example what this staging area does, right? Uh, again, if you go here, let's assume uh, you are a box manufacturer or whatever, like uh, you are doing some inventory for this box manufacturing. You receive an order for two boxes, okay? So what you normally do, uh, you first, uh, you know, review the order, check whether they have made the payment. And what you do, you, you, take two boxes and put it into some place so that it can be dispatched to the customer, right? And then once you move here, what people do? Uh, people will come, uh, there is a guy will come and review whether the payment is paid, uh, address is correct, all those things are happening, uh, product is good, it can be shipped. So this area is, is where you the reviewing happens. Once this QA is done, then what they do? They will, you know, put this boxes in a, uh, you know, in a container and then they will ship it, right? So this is an example, this is an analogy that you can imagine uh, for your working copy and then there is a staging area and then local area, local repo. So whenever you, you write some code, right? Uh, you think, okay, it attained a meaningful state, you have to move your code to local repository. But why do we have the staging area before? Because you can review this code and then see, okay, this should be there, this should not be here. And then there are a lot of changes. You can still uh, make multiple commits to the local repository. Again, we will understand all these things in a uh, you know example uh, with the code. Uh, but just assume uh, instead of directly pushing the code from the working copy to the local repository, we normally have a uh, like a parking place, the staging area or the reviewing area where you can review what needs to be shipped. Here we are shipping the container. In real world, we are shipping the code. That's it. So we will review the code and make sure this is the exact code that we want to push to local and then we will push to the remote, right? So this is what it is. Now let's go and learn this with the help of a code itself, right? So let's say uh, we understood what is Git in it. The second step is we want to, um, we have a readme file. This is the file that we are interested in. We want to move this code to local repo. As I mentioned before, uh, Git commit, when you do a Git commit, when we think we are in a meaningful, meaningful, when the project is in a meaningful state and you want to have a versioned copy of the state, versioned copy of the state, okay? 
let's say this is version one, whatever, right? You do a commit. To do the commit, first you need to move to staging area, move the files to the staging area. In our case, there is just one file, right? Uh, how to do this? How to move to staging area? Let's go here to the Git. Uh, and then if you notice commit, right? So you want to commit our code. So it is asking, there are so many files, right? In the project, there are so many files. And, and guys, let's say in your case, it, it can either come like this as well, right? So it can even come like this, right? You can show all these files instead of the folder structure. Uh, in those cases, you can just go here and click on directory. So that it will show you in the directory mode. Again, the idea of file and this Git learning IML, these are all IntelliJ related files. These, I don't have any necessity to push this to remote. Uh, even if I push this to remote, nobody is going to use this because in, in their system, they may use Eclipse, they may use VS Code, different IDEs. So these files are unnecessary files. So I don't want to include them. For now, I want to add this readme file, right? So this is the only file that I'm interested. I, I click on this, right? You can, you can do this in two states. First, you can go here, you can go to Git, and then you can say add. So when you do this, it will get added to the staging area, okay? Let's do this. So now if you notice, from unversioned files, there is a versioned change now. So if you notice, this has become a green color. Previously, there was no file, but now there is a file with this content. Okay, we want to go make a commit to this. Now we move this to staging area, and then we will do a commit. Okay, added get me get uh, added read me file with info whatever like some some meaningful message so that let's say in future you want to come back to the state you can identify with the help of this commit message right uh, good and then I click on commit so now if you notice one file committed which means uh, I have pushed to my code I have pushed my code from my workspace to look staging area and then I pushed it to local repository. Again, guys, this is also another diagram that you can take a look. So you can add a file to move to staging area. From staging area, you can commit a file to move to the local repository. We will come back to the git push later, but for now you can do it in two steps. Okay, you can also do this in one step. Let's say, um, you know, uh, I create one more file uh, let's name it as uh, file1.txt and uh, if I go to git commit and then if it is asking me which one you want to do, I want to, this one, I want to make a commit. So what I do, added, uh, what is a file? So it's so a file1, added file1, right? Uh, and then you can also add some information if you want to and then you can do a commit, right? So now, it, it does also have committed another file. So this time we didn't add it because when we do a commit, it basically IntelliJ runs the command in the back side, back end. If you go to uh, show git log and then go to console here, uh, if you scroll down and then if you notice here, uh, the git add and then, so these are all additional commands that you, you don't have to worry about. So git add and then the file name, which means this move to staging area and then once this move to staging area, it is doing git commit. And then you can, you can forget about all these things. And then the message is message that we have passed. Okay. So yeah. So created file one text, right? So this is what it is. So it, it is at the back end, it is running this command. And then now the file uh, is moved to local repository, right? So if you notice here, both are is in, you know, black color, which means, uh, it is now in local repository. So what is the use of staging uh, thing? Let's say uh, I create or I do some changes here, right? I do some changes here. It now changes to blue, which means there is some changes that is not yet committed. So let's go and try to do uh, commit. And then it's saying, hey, which one this one? Okay. But I, in the staging area, what I can do is I can basically roll back. I can roll back the changes. I can go back to the previous state. Right, I think this change is unnecessary. I don't want to do this, so I can go back. So what do you do? Once you move to staging area, what you have to do is you can commit the file to the uh, local repository, right? So once you commit the code, all these states will be stored here in the refs, okay? Uh, sorry, not in the ref, it should be uh, 
in the objects. Yeah, so each of the, your commits will be stored as a hash inside these objects, right? But if you don't have to worry about this for now, all you have to understand is if you want to push your code to remote, there are multiple steps involved. The first step is git init, and the second step is git commit. The git commit involves two steps. One is moving to staging area, and then committing the files to the local repo. So if there are multiple files, you can also choose multiple files. Uh, let's say I want to do this. I have also made some changes here. Let's do a commit. It shows there are two files that went changes. You can also see the difference. Previously, it was this. Now, in this version, it was this. Again, guys, if you notice, the 4083 is the hash, which means it, it, it basically reflects your last commit, okay? And previously, it was this, and then now it was this. So there is a new change that you have added. Um, that is this line number. So you can clearly tell you which added and you can also view side by side, you can view individually, like green color indicates <clears throat> that you have added this, right? Uh, yeah, so there is a lot of things that, uh, you know, your IDs can offer. Then I can say added information about, you know, uh, git commit, right? And then I do a commit, then all these changes are committed, right? You can go to git show git log, and then you can see all these commit here. So the message that we used added readme is here. And who made these changes? Uh, when I made these changes, everything is now uh, you know reflecting clearly here. You can also have a look at the comments. If you are interested, uh, you can also have a look at the command git add, and then the file name, this file, and this file. If you are doing multiple files, you can also do that. So we, since we are using IntelliJ, we don't have to worry about the command. But I, you can go and check your comments here, right? That's one thing. So that's all about it. So now I hope you understood what is git commit, what is staging area, when we will commit the code um, uh, on all that stuff. Now, in the next video, we we think about pushing the code to the remote so that, let's say, if, the, if you remove this, your system got crashed, you cannot recover any of your files, then all your changes are gone, right? So you need to have this stored somewhere in the remote repository. So you know, you can also collaborate with other developers or in case of any problem in your machine, you can still fetch the code from the remote repository. So that's the whole purpose. We will do that in the next video. I hope this video is useful. Uh, if you find it useful, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.